Hello everyone, welcome to this week lecture videos. Our today's topic is introduction to FinTech. Um, this chapter is not available in our regular textbook. So I will be uploading separate materials on this topic. As usual, uh, we have few learning objectives in this chapter. So first of all, we will be talking about FinTech, um, how FinTech evolution occurred. We will be learning about the factors driven FinTech innovation, FinTech ecosystems. And finally, we will be talking about uh, different FinTech applications, for example, mobile payment, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and so on. This is the outline of this week's presentation. So as usual, I will be uploading separate videos uh, on uh, these topics. So first of all, uh, what is FinTech? The word FinTech is simply a combination of the words financial and technology. It describes the use of technology to deliver financial services and products to consumers. This could be in the areas of banking, insurance, investing, anything that relates to finance. Increasingly, fintech is coming to represent technologies that are disrupting traditional financial services, including mobile payments, money transfers, loans, fundraising, and asset management. Yoshi Kawai, the general secretary of the International Association of Insurance Supervisors, a member organization of the Financial Stability Board, offered a working definition of fintech. So Yoshi defines fintech as, it is a technologically enabled financial innovation. It is giving rise to new business models, applications, processes, and products. This could have a material effect on financial markets and institutions and the provision of financial services. Um, the combination of financial services and technology has evolved in three distinct periods. We divide them uh, as FinTech one, FinTech 2 and FinTech 3. So in the next three slides, I will be briefly talking about uh, these three distinct periods. First of all is FinTech 1. The modern period of FinTech and financial technology begins around 150 years ago. And we generally mark the date as uh, 1867. Why 1867? 1867 was the date of the establishment of the first transatlantic telegraph cable. The transatlantic telegraph cable made instantaneous communication between the major markets of New York and London, or London and Paris, or even eventually several decades later, Shanghai or Hong Kong and London possible. This was the basic infrastructure that underlies all of today's, uh, not only financial technology, but much of today's communication and media developments. While the first era of modern FinTech, FinTech 1.0, was about building the underlying infrastructure that supports today's global financial markets. The second major era of the modern FinTech evolution, what we call FinTech 2.0, started in 1967. 1967 marks two very important dates in the evolution of finance and also technology. The first is the establishment of the first ATM, the first automated tailor machine by Barclays Bank in the UK. 
that automated tailor machine allowed over the next several decades a transformation in the relationship um, that people had with money and with finance. The second, just as significant, is the launch of the first handheld calculator by Texas Instruments. The first handheld calculator was transformational in the way that finance on a day-to-day -day basis operated. And of course, the handheld calculator is also the ancestor of today's smartphone. Perhaps uh, the transformation, transformative technology in the context of fintech. 1967 thus marks a period where we begin to see a process of digitization. Another, another event important uh, during this period was uh, the creation of NASDAQ in 1971, which actually saw the beginning of electronic trading. The third uh, era of the evolution of FinTech is FinTech 3.0, which started uh, during the global financial crisis. And uh, during this period, an important point is marked by 2007. 2007 was the launch of the first iPhone. The iPhone, of course, uh, has now sold over a billion around the world. And the iPhone and other forms of smartphones combined with the other factors resulting from the global financial crisis set the stage for the transformation in FinTech which we are seeing today. Now, if we think about this combination, the combination has led to an explosion in startups. One very high profile startup is Bitcoin and other forms of cryptocurrency based on blockchain or distributed laser technologies. Others have involved various forms of alternative finances like peer-to-peer uh, -peer lending or a form of crowdfunding um, uh, a range of different payments. But in fact, uh, starts up in the context of FinTech are even not new. If we think back to 1999, one of those internet bubble startup was uh, a company called PayPal. PayPal, I think most of you are familiar with, today is one of the world's most significant payment service providers, along with traditional firms like Visa or Master, or even before that Bloomberg. I think all of you are also familiar with the name Bloomberg. Bloomberg today is the world's most valuable private information services firm. Bloomberg founded by the former mayor of New York City, Michael Bloomberg, started in 1981. Bloomberg uh, started uh, using technology in the, in the area of finance um, and um, obviously in the, in the area of news media uh, in an investment bank called Solomon Bar Brothers in 2007. Uh, 2007 marks the launch of m -Pesa as well. The so M-Pesa is a mobile phone-based payment system, which transformed access to finance of a large portion of the population um, of African country, Kenya. It's when we combine the ideas of mobile payment with the smartphone that we see the transformation of financial services that is taking place, for example, in China with Alibaba, Tencent, and others. And in the slide, you can see a few other examples of the emergence of new FinTech pairs. So from our discussion so far, we understand that there are three factors that mainly driven the FinTech innovation. The first one, was the global financial crisis. The second one was um, the banking sector uh, that was affected due to the global financial crisis. And third one was the technological development. So if I give you a brief description of these three points, following the 2008 global financial crisis, 
the brand image of banks were severely shaken. For example, a 2015 survey reported that Americans trusted technology firms far more than banks to handle their money. In addition, the global financial crisis damaged bank profitability and competitiveness, and the ensuing regulation drove compliance costs to record high. Uh, this crisis further led to large-scale redundancies, leaving many professionals seeking to apply their skills to new outlets. This in turn coincided with the rapid rate of technology development, high level of smartphone penetration. In today's digital age, people are seeking easy access, convenience, efficiency, and speed. They want to conduct transactions via mobile technology platforms and applications, and such activities include managing their financial lives from tracking their overall spending to applying for a loan or optimizing their investment strategies. Given the level of service expectations from customers, there is no excuse for businesses not to embrace the latest technologies and those who refuse will certainly be losing businesses. The next point we are going to discuss is FinTech ecosystem. When people think of FinTech, they often focus on startups that are breaking into areas that banks and other legacy financial institutions have dominated. However, the figure in the slide, um, the ecosystem of fintech companies is showing that the coverage of fintech is much broader. For example, the first group of uh, finan financial institutions that belong to fintech ecosystem is the uh, incumbent financial institution. So these incumbent financial institutions are well-established uh, financial institutions such as uh, HSBC, Barclays Bank, Bank of America. Um, so these institutions are acquiring and working, uh, acquiring or working with fintech startups and building their own innovative solutions. The second group of companies are big technology companies that are active in financial services space, but not exclusively so, okay? So it means that uh, they provide financial services, but that is not uh, exclusively their role is. For example, Apple, Google, Facebook, Twitter. The third group of companies in the FinTech ecosystem is companies that provide infrastructure and technology uh, that facilitates financial services transactions. For example, MasterCard, Visa card, um, First Data, and other financial market utilities or exchanges, for example, NASDAQ. And the fourth ones are disruptors, the first moving companies. Um, those are often startups focus on particular innovative technology and process. Um, uh, for example, Stripe, um, Betterment, Prosper, Move-In, Lemonade. So these are these are some fintech startup companies. Uh, I'm not sure if you have heard this name. Is Stripe uh, as focus on mobile payment, betterment as automated investing, Prosper peer to peer lending, move in retail banking, Lemonade insurance. So those are those are fintech uh, companies. Those are called disruptors because um, those are adopting technologies to provide services. Um, disrupting the traditional technologies used to provide those services. So these are the points I just discussed. So as an umbrella term, FinTech covers many technological disruptions related to finance. So they can be classified in several categories like payments, insurance, investment advice, securities clearance and settlement, alternative funding, uh, and so on. So all these, all these categories essentially enable um, cross-cutting technologies 
Okay. Uh, for example, the data analytics, distributed laser technology, and and cyber securities. So in the in the next uh, couple of slides, you will see uh, some uh, real life examples of these uh, different categories of technologies. Uh, for example, payment. Uh, like mobile payments, smartphones, digital wallets, some real life examples are Apple Pay, Android Pay, PayPal Mobile. So insurance, um, investment advice, for example, robo advisory, um, securities clearing and settlement, for example, digital assets, alternative funding, so crowdfunding, and real life examples are in the extreme right column. Also, the, the technologies, for example, big data, artificial intelligence, machine learning, cryptocurrencies, um, biometrics, those are also used um, in the technology disruptions related to finance. Um, so this is the end of our discussion in this video. So in this video, we talked about what we understand by fintech, um, how fintech actually uh, evolved in last 150 years, the factors driven the fintech and the fintech ecosystem. So in the next uh, couple of videos, I will be briefly describing um, some fintech uh, technologies that used to provide um, convenient of fintech or finance services to consumers. Thank you very much.